So, let's go over the end game guide of Path of Exile. So, you just defeated Katava. Make sure you talk to Lani. There will be a option uh, after you finish the game. She'll give you like a, a skill book. It, pop it. It gives you two skill points. And then the next thing that you want to do is type in slash passives. So, what you're going to see is all of these different quests names. Now, I've completed all of them. If you follow the guide, you've completed all of them too. The only exception is deal with the bandits. If you side with one of the bandits, it'll say zero. And that's because if you kill all the bandits, you get two skill points. But this is how you can double check to make sure you didn't miss out on any of the quests that give you a skill point. Next, what you're going to go ahead and do is talk to Lily. And you're going to set sail from Oriath. And now we're going to get to the end game, the maps, the most important thing. So we're going to go ahead and wake, wake up over here. I'm going to talk to Helena and we're going to have to walk around. I'm going to crafting recipe. I'm going to now go to this area over here. And you will get to do the maps. And this is part of the end game. And you also want to do your third lab. Usually as soon as you can, that'd be ideal. We're level 67, but I want to show you guys the maps first. And then we'll get into that. So you're going to be able to select a map. Now, as you progress, you may have gotten some maps. Ideally, pick a map that you haven't gotten. I got two Bone Crypt maps. So ideally, if there's a Bone Crypt, I don't want that one. I want to get as many done as possible that are a variety. If I hold down my Alt key, I can see that the Atlas is incomplete as well as the bonus objective is incomplete. You want to complete the Atlas map, which is just basically defeating the boss. And then the bonus objective is to defeat it on a condition and let's go ahead and select the pier because I already have these ones. So we're going to go select this one. And then now we're Not going to uh, identify it. And you can see it has totems. Now, certain maps may have modifiers that your character cannot do. And the certain modifiers that your character could not do could be anywhere from reflect physical damage, elemental damage, or they can have some sort of condition where your character cannot regenerate mana. And some builds, they don't have any leech. So if you run out of mana, well, you can't cast your skills. So you actually do have to read this. This is very important. Earlier on, some of the mods aren't really that bad, but they will get nasty. So what you're gonna have to do is you're gonna put this inside of what's called your map device. So you can make one of these at your hideout. Now, your hideout will be different than mine. I mean, everyone's hideout's gonna be different. It's a customized area that you can go to and you can access your own hideout by talking to Helena, which uh, is over here. Let's see, uh, where is it? Oh, there we go. Great and you can go select uh, one of the hideouts. If you don't have one of these, uh, you can locate this uh, in many of the acts. There's a little floor release, or you can just Google how to unlock a hideout. And there are many hideouts. The first one that you get is in act two. It's towards like the very end, it's like in the top left. Um, you can also unlock a hideout by just playing through the campaign. There's hideouts. Just Google it if you don't have that one. You more likely have probably already unlocked one, but you just select the hideout and you can just uh, go to your hideout Farewell. via your waypoint. There's a little icon right here that says click to travel to your hideout. In the hideout, there's a little option here that says edit and you can place down the little portal. You can place down everything and uh, it kind of customizes your own area. But your ideal goal is to slam out as many maps as possible and getting the bonus objective done. Now, to do the bonus objective, if you're wondering what that is, you're gonna have to click on the menu, and there's one called the uh, Atlas screen. So you'll see that we don't have any of these completed. Now, for the tier one maps, what you wanna do is you wanna kill the boss of magic or higher version of this map. So magic meaning that the map is blue. So you see how this one's white and this one's blue. If you want to convert it from a white to a blue, you'll apply an orb of transmutation on it, and you can see, now it reflects elemental damage. My build cannot do this. So what I would do is either trade the map or uh, I would uh, re-roll the map to something that I can do. So since I do elemental damage, I cannot do this map. I'm gonna take this orbital alteration and I'm going to right click and then left click on it. And now it does physical as lightning. A lot of these you should be able to do. But one thing that is also important once you get to the end game, look at your resistances. So if you hit C by default and I go into my defenses tab over here, uh, your character might have a bunch of negative resistances. That's because after the campaign, you're going to have to basically readjust your resistances. I've got a ton of resistances, so I should be okay. Um, but as long as this is equipped, we're pretty much good to go. The reason why is um, if you want an easy way to fix your resistances, this league, um, what you can do is you can spec into the, uh, I think it's the Wildwood, right? Is that what it's called? I believe that's what it's called. <laughs> uh, ascendancy over here. Uh, 
Okay, so it's the... Oh, what they call it? The, the, the Warden. Okay, so that's what it's actually called. The Warden. There's one over here called Oath of the Magi, and it'll give you a massive amount of bonuses uh, depending on if you have items that don't have any gems socketed in them. So it's an easy way to get a bunch of free defenses and free extra stats. Like I have a bunch of movement speed because I don't have any gems socketed. This gives me 50 to our resistances if I have no socketed gems here. So that's why uh, it's set up this way. But this is a great way to get an insane amount of uh, free stats. But let's go ahead and go into a map now that we've yapped long enough, but I have to kind of explain things. So. Um, now, what's our lowest resistance? Oh, it is lightning. Okay, so that one might be a little dangerous for us. Let's re-roll this one to something maybe easier. Well, I don't really care if the monsters have more life. It's not like they're going to be able to pop a potion. I'll kill them eventually. So, we can go and run this one. So, I'm going to throw the map in here, and I'm going to hit activate. Now, there, you'll notice that there's all these other little bonuses, but I don't have any of them. So, the white one corresponds to the white ones, and the yellow ones will be on the yellow maps, and this will be later in the game. But, in the very beginning, just throw it in, hit activate, you only have a certain amount of lives to complete these um, maps. So I'm going to go ahead and walk in. And we'll see kind of how it works. And ideally what you just want to do is defeat the map boss. You may see a lot of these different little like uh, things that open up in the map. And it, it, these are all league mechanics. And we're just going to go ahead and progress and just kill the boss. Now, ideally you do want to try to kill a decent amount of monsters if you're low on maps. So you can see on the top right where it says more than 50 monsters remain. And if you see a monster that's like way too tanky, sometimes you get some bad map modifiers or there's a, a boss that just happens to have an insane amount of HP. Except for the, the end map boss. That one you, you definitely want to kill. But don't feel like you have to kill every single thing. I kind of just rush this usually. And you also want to do your lab. Let's see if we can kill these guys. And move on. Is this the boss? This might be the boss over here. Usually the boss will be, his name will be in like gold. It looks like a unique... So we'll go ahead and get him down. And now you'll see where it says the bone crypt is complete. Bonus objective complete. So I'm done with this. Now, do I need to clean up this map? I mean, I have other maps. When do I want to clean up the maps a little bit more? Well, it's kind of subjective because I can go buy maps with, let's say, chaos orbs. But if I'm like, this is my last map, I don't got any more. I don't want to go back into the campaign, right? So if I have like chaos orbs that I can trade other players with or orbs of chance, I can just get more maps. Ideally, what your main goal is, is to complete as many different maps as possible. Let's go ahead and go back, because I'm not going to clean up this map. So, now that I'm, I've done this map, and you don't have to be in this area. You can go to your own hideout, but just because it might be kind of new to you, you might be like, oh, I just want to do the one that's already, like, here. Uh, and just notice, for whatever reason, a lot of people like to do that, so <laughs> I'm going to continue to do that. But I suggest you go to your own hideout, place the map device in the little edit tab. You'll see it where it says functional items in the top. But we're going to go ahead and now do this map. Now, if I hold Alt, I can see that this one is now complete. Now, what do I do with a map that I've already completed? I can run it again, but I'm not going to get anything uh, for doing it. Now, this one I haven't done, so I'm going to go ahead and throw it in. I'm going to hit Activate, and it's going to open up. Now, all those portals will go away. Now, if you die, you're going to get sent back, and you have to re-enter the portal. So you have six portals every single map. And if you lose all portals, well, then you're not going to be able to go in. Also, that Ice Tiger is a free cosmetic. If you want to watch me on Twitch, you can get the skin for free as well. Uh, you have to watch for, I think, four hours. But nonetheless, there's also an Atlas Pass. This is why you do the bonus. So you'll see that we have a brand new skill tree. And how do we open that up? Well, we go ahead and we hit this. We go to Atlas uh, screen over here. And then at the top left, there's going to be this thing that says Atlas Skills. You can also hit Control G and open it up. But this is basically the part of the end game that lets you build your own end game. And you can search for some stuff that you like. Maybe you really like the delirium mechanic. That's like where it turns everything foggy and there's these cluster jewels that you can get. Maybe you want to do that. Maybe you like the essences. Now, which one is the best for you? That's subjective. But objectively, I want to say that in the very beginning, the things that are going to give you the easiest advantage in the game is just getting this, this one right here. Your maps contain an additional shrine. Every single map that you do, you're going to be able to get a shrine. This one is really good just to get this one. You don't need to get... There's. If I click on the middle, I'll see all the little bonuses with shrine. Or I can just type in shrine over here. If that's how I want to build my endgame experience all around shrines, I can do that. But the thing that I really like the most is just getting this. This is my recommendation for beginners as well. Most of these things on the map, they'll make the game harder in some sort of way, but they will give you a bonus reward. 
You can also block out certain things that you don't like and it'll give you a 2% chance for extra content. But in the very beginning, you're not gonna have a lot of things to throw in the map device. Like there's basically other things that are map modifiers that you can add in. You can't add in this, but like little things to add into the map to make it more difficult. But you're not gonna be able to have those earlier on because you, you just won't have them because these cost other currencies or you're just gonna have to have them drop. So one thing that I really like and I recommend for beginner players is to get what's called stream of consciousness. What this does is you cannot add more little like spices to your maps. Um, you can still convert them to blue and all that stuff, but you can't add like what's called scarabs, which is really popular um, to the maps, but our maps have 50% more base chance to contain extra content. So it tells you what all the extra content is, all of them over there, the ultimatums. So if you're wondering which one do I recommend, I mean, what I'm gonna personally go is ultimatum because it's brand new and I wanna test it out myself. But I recommend most players to eventually get Stream of Consciousness relatively early on and get the, just this one shrine one. It'll make the game much easier. But let's go ahead and do one more map so you guys can get kind of an idea on your goal, which is basically just go straight into rushing the boss. Um, I'm also going to try to rush that shrine. So there's also this over here. What is it? A master encounter? Okay. So I want to get the shrine one ASAP. Now, which path do I want to take? Well, uh... I might want to get the sh strong box as well. I actually think this one's good. So I'm going to get these strong boxes, but I want to rush that shrine one ASAP because it's going to make your map clear speed so much faster, especially if you get like an item called the goal. But I'm going to do one more for you guys. And then uh, what I plan to do, because I've actually taken your guys' feedback from the previous Path of Exile endgame guide that I worked on last season. And some of you guys wanted more just map slamming, and I'm going to show you guys uh, where to get more maps, kind of how I'm playing the first like you know, half hour-ish of my map session because it could be a little bit more thorough, I guess. But the thing is, is that the maps that you drop are going to be random. I cannot guarantee you that you'll get the same maps that I, I'm getting. And in the very beginning, I'm not really cleaning up my maps super hard because I'm just going to buy my maps or I'm going to trade them. This map over here, Pier, has like a, a boss gauntlet that you got to kind of walk through. But on top of that, you do definitely want to do your next lab. And the next lab... Uh, will be the final one that you can do without getting what's called Offering to the Goddess, which will usually be a little bit later uh, in terms of like when you want to do it. But the, the whole goal is to go as fast as possible. And if you die, it's totally okay. Don't worry about dying uh, in the game until you get to like a relatively high level. Now, right now, I only have like one more... All right, I think I... Where, I don't know where I put that map, but... Uh, nonetheless, we now we have this bonus objective completed. Yeah. Oh, so I have a loot filter, so it makes sounds when certain good things drop. And you may see so many items, and I have a video guide on, like, loot filters and, like, little tools that you can download, Path of Building, Awaken PoE Tray to find out, you know, if, like, some certain item drops, like, if I want to try to scan the item, like, oh, what is this item worth? I can hit a button, and it'll tell me, oh, this item's worth one Chaos Orb. So I'll link that down below as well. It's very helpful, because in the end game you may want a loot filter, because there's just too many items that drop, and... You don't want to see a bunch of clutter on your screen, right? So it really does help out. And again, sometimes you'll run into a, an elite that just seems like he's a little bit too tanky. Could mean that he could be dropping something real good. Oh, there's a, is there a strong box somewhere. Did I see a strong box? Oh, I could have sworn there was a strong box nearby. I thought I moused over it. Okay. But if you see any like chests or strong boxes, click on them. You know, experiment. There's going to be newer things that are brand new that are only in the maps that weren't in the campaign like the ultimatum is not in the uh, campaign so uh, you will experience it and since i have no more maps now what do i do okay let's talk about that that's an important thing so let's say i got no more maps right how can i get more maps so you can trade them with other players you can go to the path of exile website path of exile.com trade and you can trade the maps uh, with other players but for beginners a lot of times they're kind of like i might not want to trade and that's fine so what I can do is I can do the Atlas mission and I can get free maps. Again, hold alt, do the ones that, that are incomplete and make sure it doesn't have some mod that you can't do. Like if there's reflect elemental damage, I can't do it. Now, if I go talk to him and I, I can also purchase maps. Now maps will generally cost orbs of chance and later they're gonna cost orbs of alchemy and then chaos orbs as you progress in the tiers. So I'm out of maps right now, right? So what I can do is I can buy maps off of him. Actually, no, I'll do it like this. So I'm going to hold Alt, and I'm going to buy all the maps that I don't have. So this one, I don't have it. So I'm going to grab this one. Uh, let's see what else. Do I have. Okay, so this one was Township, because 
I don't want to accidentally buy two townships. Now this one, I don't have the laboratory one. So I'm going to grab that one. Core, I don't have that one. I'm going to grab that one. And these are all going to cost your orbs of chance. And if you're like, well, I don't got any more orbs of chance. Well, you can go over to Lani over here, go to purchase items. And if I need to get a certain currency over here, like this one requires orbs of fusing. Now, most of the time it's better to trade players to get the orbs of chance versus uh, getting them via... Uh, the vendor but if you need any other currency like you're like oh man i need to like socket something i need to re-roll the colors i need to do this whatever this is what you have uh it's better to trade but this is an option Remember, so the next thing i would do is i would run these maps make sure again since this one is a white map i want that bonus objective i want to get those atlas skill points let's slam another one over here and um i'm going to go ahead and roll that map but that's going to end the part one experience of our Path of Exile endgame. I'm going to add maybe like a, I don't know if I want to call it like a 1.5, but I will add more to this as we progress. But it's going to be random if you get the same maps, because how it works on the maps is it's going to try to drop a map adjacent to it when you complete the map. Uh, or actually when you kind of do the map itself. Uh, usually when you complete the map, the boss technically has a higher chance to drop certain items. And it does help you out with sustain a little bit if you make sure you at least do the boss. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to keep on doing more maps. And if you feel confident enough, you can go to the Aspirants Plaza. And you can actually do the... Uh, you can do the Merciless Lab. Now, it says 68. And it's kind of like a... It's suggested to be about that level. And we're 67 right now. So I'll eventually go ahead and do that as well. But... That's basically going to be the end game. Again, you can go always go to the epilogue and go back to the Karoo Shores. And you can use this if you want to. But I highly suggest, again, making your own hideout. But all I would do at this point is do more maps. Uh, and Oh, I left this one in here. That's where that thing went. And I'm just going to do more maps. And uh, what I'm going to do is uh, this is going to be the end of part one. But part two will be very different. And because some people have asked me like, I wanna see you do more maps so you can get like the feel of how you're doing it so fast. So I'm gonna add a 1.5, a part 1.5 to the series. So if you do want that full like experience of a hand holding, we'll do that as well. But anyways, that's gonna wrap up this part. Hope you guys enjoyed part one and I'll see you guys in part two. And I really recommend you guys to also maybe look into trading, getting some upgrades because you might have had some item during the campaign that was pretty bad. You might be due for an upgrade, but that's going to wrap up part one of the Endgame Guide to Path of Exile. If you enjoyed it, drop a like and subscribe if you guys would like to see the next part. But take care. I'll see you next one. Peace.